Number one, find the following for path A in figure 3.52, the total distance traveled. All right, so let's take a look at part A first. So what we need to do is we need to look at the total distance traveled. Now remember what distance means. I'm gonna represent it as D. Distance represents the total ground covered by an object that's moving. So let's take a look at letter A up here in the picture on the right, in the, and A is represented by the green arrow. So where is it starting? Well, the object is starting here. And where is it ending? It looks like the object is ending right here, right? Right at this particular point. So this is the end, and then here it tells me it's the start. Okay, great. Now, the distance that this object would have traveled would be exactly represented by the green line. Okay, so how do we calculate that? Well, look at the note underneath the page. Not underneath the page, underneath the figure. The various lines represent paths taken by different people walking in acidity. All blocks are 120 meters on a side. So the distance from here all the way down to the bottom of that block is 120. Same thing here, right? From here to here is 120, etc. Okay, so let's just remove that. We'll gonna so we don't get too cluttered there in the picture. So how many blocks north did A move? Well, one block north, right? So that's a one. Two blocks north, three block, uh, three blocks north. Okay, so if A moved three blocks, three blocks north and each block is represented by um, 120 meters, so one block equals 120 meters, right? We can simply then do a multiplication here, right, to find how far north um, that object traveled on path A. So we just do simply 120 meters multiplied by three, and this would be 360 meters north. Okay, great. Now also remember that this object now, once it got to this location at the top, it moved east. How many blocks? Well, it moved east one block, right? Okay, great. So now we have one block east, right? We have the same relationship that every one block is 120 meters. So this is really easy, right? It's just 120 meters times one. So this is now uh, 120 meters east. That's great, and now, when we think about this, if we have to find the total ground that's covered by the object, because that's what distance means, we would just simply add these two values together. So when we add the two values together, we get 480 meters equals the distance, I'm gonna call it D sub T for distance total. So that's the total distance. Okay, wonderful. Let's take a look now at uh, letter B. So back to the question. We also now need to find the magnitude and direction of the displacement from start to finish. Okay, so let's clean up the picture a little bit. We'll erase some of this stuff. Okay, wonderful. So let's locate where the object started again. The object started right here. And where did it end? Right at this particular dot, right? Now, we have to, in order to solve this problem, we have to know what displacement is, right? So for letter B, we're trying to calculate the displacement. So displacement, which is represented by x, is the shortest distance, and by shortest, I'm gonna say straight line. Straight line, straight line distance between two points. So always remember, the shortest distance between any two points would be a straight line. So how do I represent, in terms of the picture, the displacement? Right, we would have to simply connect the start point to the end point via a straight line. So let's do that. So it looks like it would be something like this. Okay, that line there, which is a little crooked at the top, but what are you gonna do? That line there uh, represents now the displacement. Okay, it's the straight line distance. So that's my X. Um, that's what I'm trying to find, okay? That particular distance. 
So now how do we do that? Well, remember, we still know that all blocks are 120 meters on a side. So what is the total distance from this part all the way down to where it started? Well, it traveled three blocks. We already calculated that, right? It, it's 360 meters. Then we have to find this distance from once it turns right to where it ends. So what's that particular distance? Well, that's 120. Now, taking a step back, if you look at this figure, what does it look like? What shape did I make? I made a triangle, right? So how do we solve for that particular side, the X side of the triangle? It's the hypotenuse, right? So we're probably going to be using Pythagorean's theorem. Look on the right-hand side, this equation, Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, great. So let me just redraw the triangle down here just to make it a little neater. So we got one leg here, another leg here, and now here we have the hypotenuse. Okay, great. So this was 100, uh, excuse me, this was 360 meters. This was 120 meters. And this is now what I'm trying to find. This is my displacement. So here's the right angle. Okay, this, we'll call this side, side A. We'll call the side at the top, side B. And then this would represent side C, or the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's write our Pythagorean theorem. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So the A value is 360, right, that's squared, plus the V value of 120 squared will equal C squared. So let's just take out the calculator and, oh, almost misplaced it. And let's plug in now 360 squared. So we're gonna round to um, three significant figures. So we'll get 1, 1.30 times 10 raised to the five. Okay, plus then 120 now squared. So now here we get 1.44 times 10 raised to the four, and that'll equal C squared. Add those two values together now. So 1.3 times 10 to the fifth, plus then the 1.44 times 10 to the fourth, and we get a value of exactly 1.30 times 10 raised to the fifth. Great. Yeah, actually, yeah. It, it, it actually works out to be the same. Why is it the same? Um, oh, no. No, it's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same, guys. It's not the same. How, how could that even make any sense? I was going to try to reason out something that didn't make sense. So let's try it again. 1.3 times 10 raised to the fifth plus 1.44 times 10 raised to the fourth. That sounds a little better now. Okay. So 1.44 times 10 raised to the fifth. Okay, great. And that now will equal C squared. To find the square, to find just C, we have to take the square root of both sides. So simply take the square root. So second square root of 1.44 times 10 to the fifth. And we get a value which is 3.79. So we get three, when, well, I don't have to put in scientific. So 379, let's just leave it like that, meters. And that value does make sense. Um, remember that the hypotenuse value should not be shorter than any of the other sides. It always has to be the longest side. And it is, all right? So that would be the uh, magnitude. Now all we have to do is find the uh, direction. Okay, so by direction, what they're talking about is they're talking about the angle with respect to the starting point. So if you go back to the picture, they really want us to find this angle right here. And that angle I'm going to call theta. So in my picture down at B here, the angle is this theta right here. So how do we find that particular angle? Well, we can use, I would recommend using tangent. Why? Because these are the values that are given. So... I don't want to rely on my calculated value of C, just in case I made a mistake. All right, so I'd like to use the, well, the two sides, this, the side opposite, right, being the opposite side, and then this side over here would be considered the adjacent side relative to the angle. So my tangent formula here on the right-hand side, I'm going to use. So I can find now tangent 
of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side relative to the angle. So the tangent of the angle will equal 120 divided by 360. So now the tangent of theta will equal, let's just plug that in, so 120 over, over 360. We get 0 0.333, and now we have to take the inverse tan, right? So on your calculator, if you have a 3i, uh, ti, 89, or 84, 83, this should all be relatively similar. Hit second tan, and then plug in the value of 0.333 and my calculator is in radian mode because I got a decimal. So usually, I mean, radians are fine, but um, radians are generally used for math. So what you wanna do is go into your mode and make sure you're in degree mode because we generally deal with degrees in physics instead of radians. So now I'll just try that again. So second tan of 0.333, and we get a value of about 18.4 degrees. So theta is about 18.4 degrees. Now that gives the value right, of the direction. Um, uh, but it doesn't tell us 18.4 degrees relative to what, right? Relative to what? So you have to think, well, what, what, from what axis did I measure this angle off of? Meaning this angle right here, did I measure it off of the y-axis or off of the x-axis? Well, I measured it relative to the y-axis, right? And the positive y-axis, that is, in this particular problem, right? So I can write I can write this answer in a couple of ways. So meaning I can now write that theta is 18.4 degrees. I could say uh, to the right, to the to the right of the positive y axis. That's a y down there, not an x. Okay, that would be one way to write the answer. All right, another way to write the answer, I'm gonna write it at the top, would be something like 18.4 degrees. Now I can use directional components. Okay, now remember, in terms of directions, if I were to, let's say, uh, from this particular point, right, if I were to overlay my coordinate, my directional coordinates, right, I would say that this is north, this is south, this is east, and this is west, Again, I'm measuring it from the northern axis, right? So it's relative, this angle here is relative to the northern axis. So I can write my answer now. 18.4 degrees, instead of saying to the right of the northern axis, I can now say east of north. Okay, that's another way, uh, acceptable way to represent the answer. So the last directional component here is where is the um, axis axis in which uh, in which the measure is taken, and then the first component would kind of represent the direction from that axis. Okay, the direction relative to the measured axis. All right, guys, I think that should hopefully help. If it's still a little um, unclear, we got plenty of more practice problems to do. So check out our other videos and check out number two. That's where I'm going next. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Remember to subscribe. I'll see you soon.